plant space. So, as your foot contacts the floor, the tibialis anterior will contract concentrically to dorsiflex the ankle on landing to ensure Every movement you make is dependent on muscles contracting or relaxing. To do this, they require energy from ATP. This is produced in your body via different energy systems. See our previous video on energy systems to understand this. There are three types of muscle fibre in the body. Cardiac, smooth and skeletal. Skeletal is what we're most concerned with, as this is what makes us move, and our body is made up of over 40% of skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles. That means we tell them what to do or when we want them to do it. Attached to the skeleton at origin and insertion points, each muscle is made up of thousands of muscle fibres, which are made up of thousands of myofibrils, which are made up of thousands of protein filaments called actin and myosin. That's a lot of thousands, which is why muscles are so strong. Just think of myofibrils like a long rope made up of lots of different strands representing actin and myosin. Then imagine several ropes spiral together to form a muscle fibre. Actin and myosin are responsible for muscle contraction as they slide over each other in a process known as crossbridge cycling. Actin and myosin are arranged in layers and when signalled by the nervous system, myosin binds to the actin and pulls it along using energy from ATP breakdown. This happens throughout the muscle and can change the length of the muscle by either shortening it or lengthening it, depending on the contraction type. Now we've had a look at the way our muscles are structured, let's have a look at the way we can track them. There are three different categories that these fall under, isometric, isotonic and isokinetic. The first of these is isometric. In this type of muscle contraction there is no movement. This means that the muscle is neither getting longer or shorter but is working. An example of this would be where you hold a weight in your arm with your elbow at 90 degrees, where your bicep isn't moving but is still working hard. A common example in running would be the use of the core muscles, where they're engaged but not are actively getting longer or shorter as we run. The next type of muscle contraction is isotonic. This is where the muscle is either getting longer or shorter as we use it. The first of these would be concentric movements. These are where the muscle's getting shorter. In other words, the insertion and the origin, the two ends of the muscle, are getting closer together and the muscle is getting fatter. When we're running, a good example of this would be the hip flexor. As we drive our knee through from the back position to the front, our hip flexors get shorter and contract fast in order to get us moving our knee forwards. The other type of muscle contraction is eccentric. This is where the muscle is getting longer and still working hard. It is still under load and is usually used in controlling a landing when we are running. An example of an eccentric movement would be the lengthening of the quads or the calves when we land. In this diagram we can see the quads are getting longer as we land to control the landing and stop us from falling over during a running motion. When we combine these concentric and eccentric movements quickly, they form a plyometric movement. When we land, the muscle will engage in an eccentric way, for example in the calf upon landing. The calf get, then gets longer and potential energy is stored in the form of elastic energy, which is then released upon the contraction of the muscle, making it a much more powerful movement than it would otherwise be. When we're in the gym, most of the time we are training concentric movements. Although we can overload with some eccentric movements under various exercises. However, 
plyometric training, which is more con commonly known as jumping or bounding or stuff like that, would be very useful for an athlete in terms of making sure that they can generate power quickly when they're running. Surrounding the antagonistic pairs are muscles which support and stabilise the origin so only the insertion point will move. These muscles are called fixators and synergists. For example, your obliques act as fixators for the hip flexors. Examples of antagonistic pairs are the gluteus maximus and hip flexors and the gastrocnemius and tibialis anterior. Let's look at how some of these pairs work together when your foot contacts the floor as you're taking a step during running, the stance phase. So, as your foot contacts the floor, the tibialis anterior will contract concentrically to dorsiflex the ankle on landing to ensure that the midfoot makes contact with the ground first. At this point, the gastrocnemius is eccentrically lengthened. This quickly changes as your tibialis anterior eccentrically lengthens to lower your forefoot to the ground to prepare to push off for the next stride, at which point the gastrocnemius contracts concentrically to pull the heel upwards, extend the foot downwards and propel you forwards. Higher up the leg, on ground contact, the hamstrings will concentrically shorten while the quadriceps eccentrically lengthen to allow a slight knee bend to help absorb the force of landing. Hopefully this has given you a brief overview of muscle function, type and how they work together to bring about movement, allowing us to walk and more importantly in our case, run.